Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to crack the coding interview of any company. Also this video is a part of my placement preparation playlist which is all about how to crack your dream placement. I'll give a link in the description, it will also appear on the corner card so do check it out and let's get to the video. So coding interview is a bit different from an online coding round because in an online coding round the goal is to solve the problem but here the goal is not only to solve the problem but to impress the interviewer of your solution so that he is satisfied with your approach. Okay. So I have covered this in two steps, one is preparation and the other one is execution. So obviously you need to be well prepared but you also need to execute it the right way. Because I have seen a lot of people who are well prepared but just because they were not able to articulate their thoughts well they ended up getting not selected. Okay. So here the execution is equally as important if not more important than your preparation. So let's get into it. First is the preparation part. So obviously you need to know one programming language. So whenever someone asks me what programming language should they learn, I always suggest to them either learn C++ or learn Java. Even in this, my personal preference is C++. Because C++ is a great language, especially for problem solving. So try to go with C++ or you can have an option of either going with C++ or with Java. Okay? So learn the basic syntax. Start with learning the basic syntax. So once you learn the basic syntax, and as for where to learn, there's a lot of websites. So there's tutorials point, there's Java T point, there's C++ point and there's W3 schools. There's a lot of websites. So learn the syntax. Now, once you're clear with the syntax, once you've learned the syntax, then the next thing you need to do is learn the library of that language. Okay. So learning the library of the language will be very helpful in solving complex problems or DSA based problems down the line. So C++ has STL library and Java has collections. So if you're learning C++, learn STL. If you're learning Java, learn collections. As for where to learn, it's very simple. If you want to learn STL, just go on YouTube and search C++ STL in one video. There'll be a lot of videos of length 45 minutes to one hour. Watch any one of them and you'll be clear with STL. Likewise, if you want to learn collections, go on YouTube, search Java collections in one video. There'll be lots of videos. Watch any one of them and you'll be clear with collections. But you need to have a good knowledge of the library, whether it's C++ STL or Java collections. Okay, so first learn the syntax properly. Once you've learned the syntax, then learn the library. And once you feel like you have a good hold over these programming language, whatever you're learning, once you feel like you have a good command over the programming language, whether it's C++ or Java, once you feel like you have a good hold over the programming language, then we can go on to problem solving. So problem solving will be the core of your interview because in the interview you'll be given a problem and you'll have to solve it. So you need to be absolutely well prepared with your problem solving. Okay. So there's two things. First, there is DSA. So you need to solve DSA based problems and then you need to do a little bit of computer programming, but it's not that important. If only if you have time, you can go into computer programming, but absolutely you need to learn DSA. Okay. DSA is of utmost importance. So you need to learn data structures and algorithm. As for where to learn DSA, I've made an entire video on that and I'll give a link in the description to that video. It will also appear on the corner card. You can check it out, but in brief, for learning DSA, what you need to do is for every data structure and algorithm, you need to learn the theory, you need to learn the implementation as how to implement it and you need to solve problems. Okay. For solving problems, two websites are more than enough. With two websites, your problem solving will be done for DSA. And those two websites are Lead Code and Geeks or Geeks. Okay. So you need to solve problems on Lead Code and you need to solve problems from Geeks or Geeks. Now, while solving problem, a major mistake that a lot of students make is solving problems randomly. So people go on lead code and they solve random problems and even after solving a lot of problems they still don't have much idea about DSA. So you should not be doing that. You should try to solve problems topic wise. Always solve problem topic wise. Okay. So for every data structure, learn the theory, learn the implementation, solve problems. So if you're solving Linglist, solve Linglist problems, then move on to the next data structure. If you're learning dynamic programming, solve dynamic programming problems, then move on to the next algorithm. Something like that. Okay. So solve problem topic wise. And once you've solved enough problems topic wise, then this is what you need to do. You need to solve company wise problems. Okay. So Geeks for Geeks has archives of almost every major company like Amazon, Google, Facebook, every major company Geeks for Geeks has an archive of which is free of cost. So once you're done solving problems topic wise, company wise solve problems from Geeks for Geeks. Okay. So topic wise solve problems from lead code for each data structure, theory, implementation and problems. Okay. And once you're done with that, Company-wise solve problems from Geeks for Geeks. Now, 
Coming back to computer programming, like I said, it's not that important, but if you have time, you can get into CP because it is a great way of improving your thought process and improving your problem solving skills. So for CP, you can go on code forces. I don't know if you can see this. I guess I'm running out of think. So go on code forces and go on code shift and try to solve a few, pro few problems from there also. It will help improve your thought process. So that's not that important, but DSA is absolutely something that you need to do. Now there's one more point here, while solving problems, what a lot of people do is that they give one problem, two hours, three hours, and they just give all their time to one problem. But that is something that you should not be doing. Whenever you're solving problems on Lead Code or Geeks or Geeks or whatever it is, always have a timer ready, okay? So have a 45 minutes timer or one hour timer and try to solve the problem within that time, okay? Because in the interview, you'll have a time limit, right? You don't have all day to solve the problem in interview. You'll have a time constraint. The interviewer has a fixed time to evaluate you. So try to solve problem under a time constraint, okay? So put up a timer of 45 minutes or one hour and try to solve the problem within that, okay? So on the problem solving, like I said, you need to absolutely be good with your data structures and algorithm. For that, learn the theory, learn the implementation, solve problems from lead code, solve problems from geeks or geeks, topic-wise and company-wise respectively. Now, a lot of times people ask me, how many problems should I solve? You know, how many problems will I solve to be able to ready? Well, there's no hard and fast rule. There's no perfect figure like 500,000. There's no such magic number. What I suggest is solve enough problems so that you're confident, okay? Some people get very good knowledge by solving very, very few problems and some people need a lot of problems to accumulate knowledge. So solve as many problems that you feel confident, okay? So solve a lot of problems and solve as many problems so that you feel confident that if any problem is thrown at you, you're able to think of an approach, you're able to think of a solution, okay? So there's no perfect number. Try to solve as many as you can so that you feel confident enough, okay? And like I said, if you have time, then you can also like go jump into computer programming and solve a few problems there as well. It'll help improve your thought process, okay? Now, after doing this, before going into the interview, Learn the interview experience of the company. So suppose you have com you have interview of XYZ company, then learn the interview experience of that company. So Geeks for Geeks has interview archive of almost every company. So beforehand, learn the interview experience of others before you, see what kind of questions they were asked, see how they answered and things like that. It'll, re it'll be really helpful for you. See what kind of questions the company asks generally, okay? So learn the interview experience. So all in all, this is the preparation part and you need to be well prepared with all of this so that you have a very good chance in cracking the interview. Once you're done with the preparation, let's get into the execution, okay? So first let's talk about the mindset a bit. So when you're talking to the interviewer, when you're sitting in front of the interviewer, obviously you'll be nervous and a lot of times the person gets nervous, they get anxious and because of that they start getting blank in the interview. So the mindset that you should have is of utmost confidence. Now where will the confidence come? From solving problems. That's why I said solve enough problems so that you're confident. So the mindset that you should have is I've solved enough problems so that whatever problem is thrown at me, I'll be ready and I'll definitely think of an approach, okay? Avoid getting nervous, avoid getting anxious, be calm, collected and confident. Now, once you have that mindset, then let's get into the, let's get into how you'll be tracking the interview, okay? So the interviewer will be giving you a problem that you'll have to solve. First things first is have clarity on the question, okay? Whatever question, whatever problem the interviewer has given to you, have 100% clarity on that. Don't be afraid to ask the interviewer what he's trying to say or what you need to do. Be clear with what the constraints are. Be clear with the test cases. You can ask him for more test cases. Be clear with what the input is, what the output should be. Be clear with what you need to do in the problem. Have 100% clarity on the problem. That should be your first step in the interview. Now, once you're clear with the problem, once you understand the problem, now you can get to thinking of an approach. While thinking of an approach, you should not put forward your best approach right at the start. Start with the basic approach. While looking at the problem, start with the basic approach. Put forward a basic solution, a brute force approach in front of the interviewer. Tell the interviewer a basic approach. Then move your way up towards the advanced approach. You don't need to start with the advanced approach, okay? Start with a simple brute force or a basic approach then move your way up, okay? And you don't need to code the brute force solution obviously, but at least put forward the basic approach, okay? Then like I said, move your way up towards the advanced approach, okay? Now, once you discuss your approach with the interviewer and once he's a bit satisfied with your approach, whatever it is, 
then he'll ask you to code it okay or you can ask him if you can code it once he asks you to code then you can get on with the coding and you should be talking and coding so like i said talk and code right like i said it's not an online coding round that you can just write the code submit it it will pass the test cases the interviewer will be writing will be looking at your code as you're writing the code the interviewer will be looking at you seeing how you're reacting see how you're coding okay so you should be talking and coding whatever you're coding let the interviewer know let the interviewer know what you're thinking like think out loud you know as they say so be clear with your thought process and keep explaining it to the interviewer so talk and code now there's one more thing and i haven't written that but uh, when you're coding in front of the interviewer please make sure to write clean code okay don't write garbage code don't hopscotch it and everything write clean code have different functions have utility functions and try to write your code as clean as possible now one more mistake that a lot of people make is not thinking of corner cases so you're in the interview you understand the problem you put forward a basic approach you put forward an advanced approach you get to coding it and at the last you you notice that you have forgotten the corner cases and that makes you look at the in a very bad light that puts you in a very bad light okay so try to think of corner cases beforehand only now there's one more thing this is kind of a like bonus tip from my side to you and if you've never given an interview before or you're not sure how to articulate your thoughts to the interviewer then watch mock interviews on youtube so there's a lot of channels on youtube which publish mock interviews right so there's clement clement has a great channel where he takes mock interviews of some great people kirti boswani also takes mock interviews on her channel there's a lot of channels which take mock interviews so watch those videos on youtube see how the person in the interview is reacting see how the person in the interview is articulating their thoughts and that will help get you an idea that will help you have an idea of how you have to do the same okay so watch a few mock interviews and you'll have a clear idea of how things are working okay but all in all these are the steps preparation and execution there's one more thing and if you're giving an interview then there's a chance that you might get stuck right although if you're well prepared there's very less chance of that happening but you might get stuck in the interview you might get stuck at a particular place either in the approach or in the code you might get stuck and i know a lo- i know of a lot of people who have gotten stuck in the interview and still ended up getting selected so getting stuck is not a huge problem what matters is how you handle it so if you are stuck try to remain calm try to remain collected keep your cool and try to think of different approaches okay do not end up panicking and it should not show that you're panicking okay try to handle the situation in a calm and cool way and you still have a good chance of getting selected even if you get stuck but regardless if you practice if you practice enough you'll have very less chances of getting stuck in the interview so that's pretty much it i've covered this in only two step because coding interview doesn't take a lot of efforts you just need to be well prepared and you just need to know how to react in the interview these two things will be enough for you to get selected in any company okay so do subscribe to my channel and if you have any doubts if you need my help leave it in the comments i'll be sure to answer thank you